Hey, what up, fellas? It's Coop, and winter is finally over, man. And that means for me, it's time to hit up the jetties. Not that the jetties are bad during winter at all. I just try to spend my winters going after some big speckled trout. And it actually was a pretty good winter for me this year. I actually ended up catching three trout over seven pounds. But now it is jetty time, and things tend to come alive during spring. The best way to have a good time at the jetties is this right here, some live shrimp. Hey man, the fish are running right now. A lot of times you'll hear this anytime there's even a mediocre bite happening. But when it's really happening, it's hard not to catch a fish. And right now, well, the fish are running. Reloaded the shrimp water and we're good to go. All right, shrimps. I was gonna say be safe and then I just dropped them. I don't know if you can see it fellas, but I'm telling you we're late. Literally everyone in a hundred mile radius is out here, boys. <laughs> See if we can find this place to slide in here. All right, we're going straight in right off the rip. We're going to start with some live shrimp looking for some flat boys. They could be here this time of year, but you never know when they will be or not. So, all we can do is check. Check out this guy, too. I think that's a pink shrimp with that spot right there. Very lively guy, too. Starting off shallow at first, we do have two slip bobbers rigged up, but we're going to start with the bottom rig since we're already pretty shallow. Alright, let's see what happens when we slide this guy in here. Super shallow. Probably nothing. Sometimes you do see a ton of little rain minnows right here, which I'm not seeing. I really like to see those. Nope. I could not give away a shrimp. If you can't do that, you're probably in the wrong spot. Wank. Alright, switching over, looking for some sheepers. Looks like everyone is on the channel side, but I'm going to be the guy I am and fish the other side and probably not get bit. I'm giving you 10 seconds to get hit. There he is. There he is. <laughs> I gave it 10 seconds. It didn't even take that long. It might be an LG though. One issue with sheeps, they're, they're a little bit heavier than they look. So you have to get down there. Let's risk breaking your line. Yeah, there's a little guy. Oh, he fell off the hook. Look, he's showing right there. I don't know if he should have. Damn, look at this. He's in attack mode. That's probably 15, though. Little one. I'll take the little one. Oh, yeah. Is this dumb, fellas? This guy's. He could stretch 16. But first fish of the day. And it's a beauty in attack mode too and he was very patient with me just laid on the rock so we'll let him go maybe we shouldn't let him go a little short we'll run it we're probably gonna get rocked up here we're probably gonna get rocked up but we'll run it there he is there he is come on bud get up get up over the rock boy this guy I don't know if this guy's going back. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I might release into grease with this fella. Nope, it's a little guy. Damn, what are you doing, Mr. LG? I said he wasn't going, ah, he could probably stretch. We'll take a gander. We'll see how big he is. Barely 15 on this guy, but we released the last one, so I don't mind keeping them. I was looking for two, just two bigger size fish, but if they're smaller like this guy, we might need to keep three. Everyone's catching, oh my God. You seeing how many people are here, fellas? Everyone's catching fish. It's crazy how many, how many fish can be down there. It's insane. Rest assured. The big ones right here, though. So true. There's a guy. Dude, we, I think we're in the LG spot. This might be a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, he's a little bit bigger. He's a little bit bigger. 
Come on over the rock, boy. Right there, right there. Oh, that's a better one. Woo. But this boy is dark too. Sheep are kind of weird, man. They, they can change colors. And this is a dark one, a big boy too. That's the big boy. That's the big boy. Look how fat that guy is. He's a fatty. Damn, that's a big one. We'd be catching the LGs and then we stumble into this fat fella. Dude, this guy has been eating. That is incredible. That's a big one, man. Let's go. And he's also in attack position. Sick. Fat boy. Hey, appreciate it, dude. Good luck. Woo. <laughs> There's a decent little sheeper there. Fat boy, too. And we will be stringing this fella up. Damn, that's a, that's a really nice one, actually. We might not even need a third. Jesus. He was dormant and then he went crazy. He almost spiked me too. Dude, sometimes when you're fishing, I, I, I kind of start to think that these fish don't want to be caught. It's crazy, but he will be going on the stringer. Sorry, big fella. We're in the spot. We're in the spot. Yeah, this time, oh, there he is. We lost him. This time of year is just crazy though, man. The only, the only issue is it would be like one of the best times of the year to fish for sure. The only issue is the wind gets crazy. So you only have so many days to get in there. A lot of y'all seeing this, the shrimp getting debodied and you're saying, hook it by the tail. And I've definitely tried that. Usually it does not end up working out for me. Matt, we'll try it one time because I know you guys are saying it in your heads. We'll try it for the one time. Maybe you guys are right. There he is. Okay, man. <laughs> I take it back. You guys are smart. Hey, y'all smart. Y'all smart. I knew it all along. Woo. Another LG. Interesting how we catch him. Ah, he's not bad. That's a, not a bad keeper. Oh. Chill, bud. Just after seeing that big 19 and a half. That's all I want. You son of a gun. There's our third fella. Not a bad one. He's, he's been eating a little bit too. A decent one, decent one. Yeah, definitely 15 or 16. There it is. Three down on the string. That's all we need, baby. Now, usually I'm always saying these guys, live shrimp are the ticket for sheepers. But to some of you, they'll definitely eat up dead shrimp as well, just because of how many of them there are. If you want the sure bet, though, you got to get some live No! I didn't want to hook them there. I didn't want to hook him. I was trying to bring it back in and he got it. Dude, we found the, the hole right here. Everyone's catching him, don't get me wrong, but it's just automatic right in this spot. I'm trying to hold it like a damn trout. All right, I'm ready this time, fellas. I'm ready, I'm ready. Ready to set the hook on the there he is. He's on. Oh my goodness. Man, I, <laughs> I just can't believe it, dude. It happens every year and I still can't believe it. That's a little bit nicer one too. Well, that's a fat fella. Sheesh. Woo. Don't do it, fella, don't do it. I just saw one of these spikes going through my head right there. Not an LG, you got an FF right there. A fat fella, and he's going right back. Woo! We will let this guy go, though. Woo! I don't want to throw him because he's so so fat and heavy. I don't want to throw him a long distance. Get him shaking around. So wave came in, threw him, and he glided right in. Let's get our fellas out of the water right here. And we're gonna try one more spot real quick. And they're pretty heavy, just for three fish. Woohoo! Yeah! Right. 
Woo, sheep's at this time of year, man, they go pretty crazy. And I'm gonna show you what I think is the all around best way to catch them and how to rig it up. But first I, I have to talk about a little bit of controversy. Now we're just getting past spring break. And let me tell you, man, I noticed a lot of people doing just straight out illegal things. I'm telling you, man, over the last year or two, I'm kind of realizing that a lot of fishermen are, are really not doing what they should be doing. And obviously the greatest concentration of that is gonna be during spring break. I only fished a couple days during the main week of spring break and I saw so many illegal things and just and again just things that are not good for the fishery things like catching your limit of five sheep's head taking them back to the truck and then you see them coming back and loading up their stringer again people at the jetty bragging about not having fishing licenses people keeping oversized reds without tagging them and the thing is I don't really talk about what people should do but in the background I do do a lot trying to push people in the right direction so we can have a better fishery but I mean, unfortunately, I've met a ton of people who knew me and liked the videos, but at the And during spring break, I even saw people who were releasing sheep's head because they already had their limit, but the way they were releasing them, they were pinching them by the eyeballs and throwing them back in. That's just malicious compliance right there, and I don't know, man. I hate to see that at the jetty. But man, I'm saying the least you can do is follow the laws and regulations and try and take care of our fishery just a little bit. All right, now let's check out what I think is the best all around rig for some sheepers, the slip bobber rig. So what the slip bobber allows you to do is you have a very castable setup right there, only a few feet to cast. But at the same time, you have the bobber that can slip. So when it hits the water, it's allowed to go as deep as you want it to all the way up to the bobber stopper. And the great thing about that bobber stopper right there, it is easily adjustable. So on the fly, you can switch it to whatever depth you want it to be at. And here's how we rig up the slip bobber rig. Since we have a braid mainline, we're gonna tie a mono leader to it. And this mono leader needs to be at least as long as how deep you want it to go. For me, I go seven to eight feet on the leader. The knot I like to use for our connection knot here is an Albright Special, but Uni to Uni works fine as well. And then once we have our mono leader on, we can put on one of the most important parts, the bobber stoppers. The nice thing is these things are super cheap. You can get probably like a thousand of these for 10 bucks. They are on these little wire loops here. All you need to do is feed that leader line through one of those loops, bang. Then once you do have your leader through the loop, you just pull one of these bobber stoppers and pull it over your line just like that and there it is nicely on your line the next thing to go on the line is the cork and the important thing about the cork is you don't want too big of an opening here you want it to be small enough that it'll get stopped by the bobber stopper slide the bobber onto your main line and then we're going to add a few weights the weights are pretty important because that's what's going to bring it down to the depth that you want if you do not use enough weight sometimes the friction just pulling the line through the bobber will not allow it to sink so you definitely want to use enough weight i would recommend 3 8 ounce at the minimum almost done now we got a barrel swivel tying that to our main line and then we have about uh, a foot and a half of leader down to our hook. The hook I like to use for pretty much every species is the kale hook and when I am using live shrimp I like to tie a loop knot to the hook just so the bait is a little bit more free since it is alive and swimming around. There it is fellas the slip bobber rig. Definitely not the only rig you can use for sheep's head. I love you guys very much. Be safe. We'll talk to you next time and take what you need release the rest. Hey that's that's pretty good. I might have to trademark that.